We're back with John Cardella from Ceridian Canada. And just before the break, I promised that we would start to talk a little bit about recognition programs. I know that that's an area that uh, is near and dear to your heart. So uh, tell me a little bit about the kind of recognition programs that you're currently using at Ceridian. Will do. Well, uh, for sure, for us, uh, recognition is, uh, is very, very important. Uh, it's important because, uh, in our view, recognition is one of those uh, key triggers of engagement. So if you improve uh, your ability to recognize and appreciate employees, that will drive uh, engagement even higher. Uh, it, it's got like a, a big lever effect, if mm. you will. Right? I call it the performance accelerator. And in fact, I there you go. trademarked that phrase. I like it. I yeah. love it. The performance accelerator. Uh, so um, so it's, it's very, very important for us. Uh, very important because we also, uh, you can't be a top employer if you do not appreciate your employees. And so over the years, you know, we've tinkered with uh, how do we improve our, our, uh, our employee recognition programs and, and how do we improve our reward programs. But we try not to confuse the two. So for us, you know, recognition, um, you know, there's two components. It can be formal, you know, when you have formally, rec formally recognized employees by certificates or other means, uh, or it can be informal, just uh, just a pat in the back, you know, what a great job, you know, you did today. So we tried a whole range of different things, and uh, we felt that we were still lacking something. And with, with the rise in social media, mm -hmm. we, we, we essentially started talking to, uh, to a company, um, uh, Achievers, and, uh, and Achievers were able to basically share with us how, how we could, you know, leverage uh, people such that uh, we could have everyone involved in recognition. So peer-to-peer -peer recognition. Peer-to-peer, peer-to-peer, yep. -peer, top-down, uh, 360, you, you got it. And, uh, and when we did that, you know, our organization really, really took off in that space. Uh, we were, you know, you ask, you ask Achievers, the company, we were amongst the top organization in terms of uh, internalizing uh, the approach. Uh, we had a virtually 90% adoption rate within the first month. And, uh, and our, our recognitions now are going through the roof. We're, uh, we have, uh, I checked, and we have about, in 2011, we had about close to 20,000 instances of recognition. And those instances are not all related to you know, points or, mm -hmm. or gifts that come with points. But a lot of them were what we call high fives. And there's just, you know, Sally saying to Joe, you know, thank you for helping me out. I uh, really appreciate what you did for me. You know, you know yeah. Mucho gracias. So, you know, you, you were very clear in delineating the difference between recognition versus reward. And I think that's an important thing to understand. I mean, for me, I think of reward as often having a financial component to it, <clears throat> whereas recognition doesn't by default have to have a financial component. Correct. What you've just talked about is Correct. the high five award. It doesn't cost you anything to, to say good job. Right. Um, now, the one thing that I find really important about recognition that a lot of organizations are not implementing is that recognition becomes just the the good job element. You know, it's just, I just say good job, but the best companies are tying it back to something specific, to either a performance objective, to one of the values or something. And so when I say, Sally, that was a great job because you really demonstrated our value of integrity when you behaved in that way. Correct. Correct. That's when I think the recognition yeah. program becomes truly a powerful tool. Yeah, and we do the same thing. We we basically utilize our values. So so our employees, when they go to recognize someone else, you know, uh, uh, the 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 software basically asks them, well, what are you recognizing them for? Is it integrity? Is mm -hmm. it customer uh, driven service? Is it because they're high performing people? Is it because of accountability? So they select, and then it helps them basically shape that response. Right. And so when you're doing that, you're not only making those people feel terribly, terribly good that, that they're following the values, but you yourself are reinforcing the values within the about. organization. And when you're doing that, you're perpetuating the culture of the organization. You know, and that culture being uh, appreciation, which is just amazing. Yeah, just I amazing. think that's such a, a critical element in recognition that too many organizations don't take full advantage of is making sure that when you're recognizing, 
you're aligning it with behaviors that you want to see modeled. Because not only does it reinforce it for me as the recipient, as you say, or as the giver, <coughs> as you said, but the other thing it does to everybody else that yeah. observes, they go, aha, now I know why Mary or Sally got that recognition because they did this. And if I'd like to get that recognition, then that's a behavior that I need to start to demonstrate. Yeah, and it's amazing because we're, transparency is something that we also believe in very, very much. And, uh, you know, the instance that you push that button and you say why you recognize Joe, well, their name comes up on this, uh, on, on, on a scrolling, you know, web and everybody sees uh, what's going on in the company, which yeah. is truly amazing. The other thing that we do with recognition is that we have uh, a gradual step up process mm -hmm. so that you can start with peer to peer. It then goes by points. You can have executives recognize people. Uh, but at the same time, we also have what are called champions. So we, 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 we take the best of the best each month, and we then we decide, you know, who are those people, and we recognize them as individual champions. And again, we have committees that will vote in terms of who did what, uh, but in the end, we do identify uh, key people that really walked that extra mile. And then what's been really interesting we take uh, those monthly winners, we put them in a, in a lottery draw, and every year we've selected 15, and these 15 people and their spouses get to go on some, some, neat, uh, some neat trips in the past, which wow. is something that we've uh, strived to do. And or if we don't have, for, for some reason we don't have the trip, we give them money in, uh, in lieu of. Which but is, something uh, that really something acknowledges that. Something that really that. acknowledges some amazing contribution to the company. Yeah. But in terms of the dollar value that you apply to recognition and, um, you know, confirm or deny, my, my suspicion would be is the amount of recognition far, far exceeds the investment that you put in. I mean, the, while the trip is important for sure and there's a significant cost on that, that's only to 15 people, but you think of all the hundreds and hundreds of examples of recognition over yeah. the course of the organization or the year, that's what really drives it. Absolutely. What you're really doing when you're recognizing someone is you're really validating that they are of value to the organization, that they are uh, adding uh, something special to, to, to what's happening. And, and at the end of the day, you know, we all want to be valued. We all want to be recognized. We all want to be appreciated. That's what you're doing, really, and uh, and it's 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 part of human nature. So yeah, well, it goes back to our original comment about you know you leave your boss, but right. it's because your boss is invariably the person who has the greatest effect on you in terms of recognition. Yeah, and uh, w one of my other you know beliefs is that recognitions for 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 people can be one of the easiest things to do, mm. right? But yet you know you wonder. Uh, how many people get starved for it in organization? Yeah, well, most. Yeah. In, in most organizations exactly. I go into, I mean, you ask them about the recognition program and um, they'll start talking about, you know, well, we recognize people for how long they've been here, um, you know, their anniversaries. I mean, stuff that really, I mean, that's more of a survival thing. It's not really tied into, you know, how much I've contributed to the organization necessarily. Right, right. Um, and they think that's recognition. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, we, we do, in our organization, we do what's called a pulse of talent survey every year. And one of the findings that we found this year uh, is that uh, there are a lot of employees that uh, uh, are not getting sufficient recognition in organizations. Right. And organizations could, could, could really well uh, uh, address that uh, in, in, in very easy fashion. Yeah. But, uh, well, and, and as, as much as you guys are obviously a leader in, in recognition. I mean, that puts you in a very, very small category. It's one of the areas that I find most underutilized in organizations. And it, as I say, it's, it's, uh, I consider it to be the performance accelerator. It, it's, it has a huge impact and the cost it, relative to the benefit. It doesn't have to so cost. Low. It doesn't have to cost uh, very much, if anything at all. And again, it's a lot of it is triggered by, uh, by leadership, yeah. right? Yeah. It's all by leadership. Uh, you don't have to have fancy programs. It so happens that we do. Uh, we're very proud of the program we have. But, uh, but you can have, as long as you have uh, responsible managers that uh, are keen in, uh, in recognizing uh, employee effort, that's really what it's all about.
it, it's really just an eye to eye and saying thank you and just, uh, and just sharing with them that, that you do appreciate what they've done, you know what they've done. Well, and that speaks to, you know, the importance of that managerial level and, and the impact right. that those people can have and the, the importance of making sure you've hired the right people in those roles. Um, I often talk about, you know, hiring for character versus competence, you know, attitude versus aptitude. I mean, you may be able to do all the right things, but if you don't bring that leadership mentality to whatever your role is, absolutely, then, you know, you're really not looking after you're not really delivering the best against what you can deliver against. Exactly. You know, over the years, uh, anytime I've found myself getting in trouble with uh, having uh, made a wrong hire, it's because uh, you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to hire by, by skill. I want the best skilled person in this role. Yeah. And you know what? You can, you can find those people but they're not necessarily going to be the best fit for the job. That's right. Well, that's all the time we have today, John, and uh, thanks so much for joining me and sharing your insights and experiences so freely. For more on the show and to share your feedback, go to rogerstv.com. You can also connect with me online at billhog.ca, where you'll find lots of information and articles on building a high-performing work environment or to simply ask a question. Thank you for joining us. Our goal is to inspire leaders like you to accelerate performance. Best wishes for your continuous improvement.